back on the investigative journal. I'm your host, Greg Szymanski. And let me tell you, as an interviewer, um, someone who has researched the Illuminati uh, for a long time, it started way back when, uh, when I was a young reporter in Rome. It's a whole different ball game when you're actually talking to someone with experiences like this. It takes it out of that realm of what is quasi-fiction fact. Uh, into the realm of reality, and it's 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 uh, it's really shocking. And uh, and I'll be honest with you, uh, this is a story uh, that folks you have to listen to because this is going on in our country. All the things you're seeing regarding uh, our rights being taken away, the police state, uh, the war in Iraq, 9/11, all these things have to do with this powerful group. And uh, Zvala, you know, you're talk, we're talking about mid-level people, then we're going to talk about mm-hmm. some of the lower-level people. I'm interested who they are. But I imagine a lot of these, you said they weren't happy, but a lot of them probably stay because it's very, I mean, this is a, this, it's a very, uh, very lucrative uh, way to live, I imagine, you, you, from oh, wealthy yeah. families. Oh, yeah. In fact, and that's the main thing that, that's one of the factors that keeps people in. The reason more people don't leave is because leaving means giving up your husband, your children, your entire family on both sides, your money, and basically for a lot of and, and for a lot of people leaving the group, it means giving up everything and starting out penniless and alone. And not only that, but then you're you're combating internal programming to recontact, to go back, to be loyal, to be a good member. Mm-hmm. And and I've known many people that tried to leave and then went back because they just couldn't take it. Do you, uh, do you want to take a phone call right now to break it up? Sure. Okay, uh, Marilyn in California. You're on the investigative journal, Marilyn. Yes, I've been uh, uh, just sort of caught part of this. I lost part of it. I'm li- listening on the Internet, but I didn't quite catch it. How did this woman become involved in this Illuminati training? Uh, go ahead. Uh, can you explain that, Zvali? Yeah. I was taught it from early childhood. I was mentored into it. Uh, trainers in the group are mentored. You, you work with older adults, and they show you, and you are given increasing responsibility until by the time you're in your teens, you are basically doing adult training responsibilities. You've been taught for years. Parents put you in it, or? Yes, they were members. Oh, I see. So it comes down through the parent, one parent to another. Are yeah, they, or, are, or, or from both. Are they private schools? Do what? Are these private schools? Well, when my children were schooled at private Christian schools, they were all Illuminati. Oh, okay. you're saying that the Christian schools are Illuminati? Some of them are. Not all, but some. No, I'm not, no, no. The, the ones that my children were in were specifically. But, no, there's a lot of good Christian schools that have nothing to do with the group, but some can be. Now, I went to a public school, but what's interesting is out of three public schools I went to as a young child, two have burned down. So there's no access to any school records. I'll be gone. Uh, Marilyn, just to get you up to speed, uh, uh, you're born into this, uh, then you're trained as a young child, you go through an induction ceremony in the Vatican, and this is uh, going on with 1% to 2% of our population, according to Zvali, very serious uh, in all levels, government and everything else. Go ahead, Marilyn, you have another question? Yeah, when you say uh, uh, the Vatican, now that is not a Christian religion. Okay, so I mean, I'm a Christian. But we do yeah. not look at Catholics as a Christian religion. We look at them as the precursor of the uh, New World religion. So with well, you know, if I may just break in, I was grew, I, grew, I grew up a Catholic. I don't get involved in the splicing of the religions. I'm basically stating that when I started uh, researching the Illuminati as a reporter in Rome, and I realized there was a bad portion of the church, I, I looked at it. I had to deal with the evil and the good. And so that's the way I reconciled it, the evil within the Catholic Church uh, okay. at the high level of the Vatican, which seeps down into many, many areas. Go ahead. Okay, well, I won't, just, I won't argue that yeah, point. Yeah, I don't yeah. agree with it, but, but yeah. it sounds like you have become possibly born again to get out of this. Could I be correct in that? Yes, yes, Marilyn, very much. Now, first, I do want to say I am not slamming the Catholic Church or well, the average Catholic. I have many good friends that are Catholics, that are strong Christians. I became a Christian, and that's the only way I could get out. But just so you know, there too, a lot of card-carrying Illuminists, well, we don't really carry cards, but I'm using that term, Yes. are members of the Baptist Church, are members of Pentecostal churches. It, 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 in fact, I was on the worship team for a Wesleyan church in San Diego in my day life. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Because, uh, yeah, because, just, uh, very, very confused. I mean, I, I, uh, I think this is interesting. And, and, and as far, you know, many people say that the Catholic Church will be the forerunner of the new world religion. There's some very good books out. In fact, I think you may have interviewed one of these men, the uh, Grand Plan designed by John Daniel. Uh-huh. Do you remember that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, but, okay. But go ahead. Catholic, Catholic has no idea of what's going on in the Vatican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's interesting that that the average Catholic would not go what's going on. That's just my take on it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. As an average Catholic going to Rome my first time in 1980, I didn't know what was going on, and I grew up as a Catholic, went to Notre Dame High School. It was quite a learning experience for me. Why, why do um, Catholics, when they find out how evil the church is, stay in it? I mean, do they really, why would they want to stay in it? That's what bothers me. I know some good people that are like that, and I don't get it. <laughs> well, that's the only answer there's, there's uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there are many Catholics that aren't actively practicing. Yeah. Thank but you. anyway, we'll leave that for another time. Thanks a lot, Marilyn. Uh, we'll be back on the Investigative Journal in three minutes with Zvali. Okay, uh, you know, they're not going to get me, that's for sure. My house is anti-illuminated. Uh, it's not going to happen, uh, folks. And, uh, you know, just to end that, Swally, before I get back to you, uh, just to end that conversation we had with Marilyn about Catholicism, I look back and I really thank my dad. Um, and I, I do it in kind of a way, i just thinking about it now, I didn't know what the church was about. But, you know, something strange did happen when I was young. Uh, my mom died and I was uh, 10 years old. My brother was six months old. At the time, she died of leukemia. It was a very, very tragic uh, affair. It left my dad and me and my brother alone. And I remember my dad literally took a, uh, a priest, a head monsignor in our parish, and it was, I won't even tell you where, St. John Brebeuf, yeah, right outside of Chicago. And uh, this man came into our house, I'll never forget it, and said that he was going to put me and my little brother in an orphanage. And my dad literally picked him up and threw him out the door, literally. Mm-hmm. And from that point on, my dad never went back to church again. My brother never went to a Catholic school. I, of course, uh, asked if I could finish only because I had friends there. But, you know, who knows what would have happened, uh, looking back on what's the, uh, the craziness that goes on in the church. But anyways, while you were talking about, uh, you know, something, these people that, are too, that do not want to get out because of the financial ties. But let's go back when you were in the uh, Illuminati, and how did this happen? How did you finally leave? And tell us this whole story. Uh, about you leaving the Illuminati. We haven't touched on that yet. Sure. Well, I do want to say one thing that I agreed with Marilyn on. Without faith in God, I couldn't have done it because I became a Christian, and that that was for me revolutionary because it made me question again more of what I was being taught or had believed all my life. I for the, began to realize that what I was doing was wrong. I became increasingly cynical. And... I also then started standing up to the head trainer in the county who despised me because he would do things that were just blatantly cruel for no reason whatsoever. I'd say, you're wrong. Well, people don't like that. <laughs> and he he would, he would took it out on me in a lot of horrible ways. But I finally made the decision to run. I ran to, this, to another state because I knew that my chances of getting out while still staying in that area with people I knew surrounded by people who were in the group was not going to be very good. So I went to another state. I, uh, after You had to leave your family and everything, right? Everything. Well, my children were with, with, with their grandparents, and at that point I thought that was better than them being with my husband, and I was going to go get my kids. But my husband then called, and he said, I want to reunite with you. And I said, okay, that's you know, that's wonderful. And I said, but you have to get help. You have to get some treatment because we can't go on. You've got to get out of the group. And he said, okay. He said, I'll pick up the kids and meet you in a week. So, you know, the day before he called, said, I'll be there tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. And so I was excited thinking, oh, he's getting out. He's getting out. That's wonderful. Instead, he went, he had gotten the kids several days before. He was lying to me. I didn't know it. I'd gone to a judge, and the day that he was supposed to arrive, there was a knock on my door. It was the policeman serving me a uh, 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 divorce papers and mm-hmm. also restraining order saying that I could not come with a hundred yards of my husband or my children. And at that point, I felt slightly punished for leaving the group. Um, I fought that, and it, 
I fought for four years with a court system that said that things like this didn't occur because my husband would go into court and say, this woman's psychotic. She's making it all up. There's no way. Ha, ha, ha. This stuff doesn't happen in this day and age. And the judge would say, you're right, slam. Full custody to the father. And I had to have supervised visitation for four years with my own children so that because I was considered a kidnap risk. Um, but through a lot of prayer, I had my whole church praying for me here in Texas. Um, and through what I believe are a series of miracles, my children were finally allowed unsupervised visitation with me after four years. And during that time, I, I, I said to my daughter, who was 14, I said, I want so badly for you to get out. And she looks at me, and she starts going, oh, you shouldn't have said that, Mom. You shouldn't have said that, Mom. Yeah, she, just, she just freaked out. She just totally lost it. And I realized it was her mm -hmm. programming cycling because she was just terrified. You, you know, she was like, why did you say that? Why did you say that? You know, and I said, it's okay. It's okay, honey. Calm down. Calm down. And then finally, she, she, she was just shaking, shaking. And then finally, she said, well, I don't want to go back and get hurt. And then I said, you don't have to. And at that point, I faced federal prison, but I called my, my ex and I said, I will face, I will not let those children go back and get hurt again. And he okay. flew out, he flew out to get them. And he could have put me in prison at the time because I was breaking the, the custody visitation. And you know how strong the courts are on that? Mm -hmm. And I said, I said to him, I said, please, you're, Look at because well, my my daughter and son said we don't want to go back, Dad. We don't want to get hurt. We don't want to do this anymore. And he looked at them and he said, "I want to go think about it." And so he went he he went home, and I was praying for him at the time. And then that night he called me and says, "Oh my God, oh my God!" And I said, "Wait," he said, "We've got to get out." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, you do." And he, he I mean he, he and then he said. Because he, and then he he made the decision to to get out. At that point, he went to a notary public. He gave me and he 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 did a legal document to make full custody of my children. And then he said he was so sorry for it. He put me through the H E L L. He put me through for years. Now, have you had any reprisals from anybody in the group since you leaving, or any warnings to yeah. be quiet or oh, anything yeah. like oh, that? Yeah, of course. I mean, and there's one time when. Um, I did write one article that named some specific dates and times, and I uh, I got hurt afterwards, and it, it made me very cautious. And that's why I, I don't give a lot of radio interviews and why I don't okay. do a lot of this. That's one reason why. Um, well, I, I appreciate this because, you know, the number of people you're going to help, I maybe... You know, maybe, maybe, you know, waking up the American people, what's really going on. Uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, you can wake up many more people by a person like you than talking about a 100 million different generalities. Let me take a call. Chris uh, in Washington, you're on the investigative journal. Hi. Um, Smalley, I just want to uh, say how much I appreciate your bravery in um, presenting this information in the way that you are. I've read your website recently. And my question is very simple. Um, based on the information that you're presenting, I'm wondering what timeline um, the, uh, the organization of, uh, of the larger family that you're describing has for um, implementing the, uh, the New World Order. Okay. I was told it would occur during my generation. I was told that by the year 2050 um, that they would be revealed. Now, again, their timelines change, though. In fact, I kind of, I think, jokingly referred to them as being like the Soviet Union because, you know, how they had their five- and ten-year plans and then things always got changed. In my own lifetime, I saw several different timelines for things that were supposed to occur change. But as Greg noted, um, I've also heard of from different people that, Actually, there, there's a huge push in the last few years. It's like, it's close, it's close, let's make things happen more quickly. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I couldn't begin to guess whether that's an accurate timeline or not. I know what I was told. I have a follow-up question, and that's it, and, and this will be it for me. Um, I, I have recently, against my own um, resistance to doing so, investigated started to investigate fringe matters, if you will. Among mm -hmm. them, uh, the, you know, the upcoming uh, date on the Mayan calendar of 2012. Mm -hmm. And as I've done this research, it's, um, I've allowed myself just to be open to this information without believing anything I'm reading. 
And mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the ideas that's presenting itself is, is that around 2012, not just according to the Mayan calendar, but many other theories out there, that we will be undergoing as a planet a revolutionary shift, if you will, of some kind or another. Um, and I'm wondering in the back of my mind if there might be any kind of uh, race against the clock on that scale, if you will, especially if we're talking about a potential spiritual warfare Using oh, yeah. your words in, in in play here. Do you see a possible relation there? Yes, I do. And and uh, 2012 is an important year. But um, again, I I was not told that the final revealing would occur then. But I believe that Paul, what will happen is there will be events taking place that will help to set the stage. Um, okay. There's going to be. I was told, and again, I'm telling you what I was told while a member of the group. So please take it with a grain of salt because. As I know, these people aren't always honest or trustworthy. They are deceptive. But I was told that there would be an enormous economic collapse prior to the revealing, that, that basically um, the stock market would destabilize. Well, that appears to be already happening. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and, uh, and, and it's, I was told it would make the Great Depression look like Sunday school. And, and at that time, it's, it's going to be, they're going to really be manipulating finances to bring about chaos, confusion, warfare, and then, I mean, but see, I don't like to be so negative. I'm just, but I am telling you what I was taught when I was in the group, you know? Well, I, I so mean, appreciate it. Yeah. And, and I'm they, sure we all do. Yeah. And so, You're a great I, voice. Well, thank you. I mean, I appreciate that very much. And I, but out of this chaos, they said, would come order. See, the, the group believes that out of chaos comes order. Well, I, yeah, well, I as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'd rather uh, just, uh, you know, let things, uh, you know, Svali, these guys want to bring down this country financially, whatever way possible. And right now, your voice is important in that. And, Chris, I really appreciate you saying that because we want to stop these guys. I mean, come on. Uh, let's get uh, American people to get together and just put an end to this. We have a powerful group in numbers. We may not have the money, but we can take it back. Take it back. And uh, I don't want to be bullied by these kind of people. That's my feeling. Yeah. Uh, let me take another call. Uh, Harper in Canada. Can you hear Harper? Hi, yeah, can go you? ahead. Okay, great. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, great, thanks, Greg. And Savali, I read your... Um, your expose when it came out in Sweet101.com a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I always wondered what happened to you because you vanished from Sweet101. So it's great to hear about you. A couple quick questions. I'll make them real fast. First is the term Moriah conquering wind. I'd never heard that before or since I read it in your expose. I wondered if you could elaborate on that term a little bit. I also wanted to ask you if these, this cult, um, as far as you know, claims to or believes to derive any of its heritage from Atlantis or any other um, lost civilization. Okay. okay. I'm not right. sure about the reference to Mariah you're describing, because Mariah is, is I mean, but I can I certainly address the second question. Um, the Illuminati completely believe that Atlantis is real. They teach it to their children as part of the oral history. They believe it was the, one of the greatest civilizations that ever existed and one of the most advanced. And what they teach, their their take on it is that Atlantis was a great race of highly intelligent um, people who uh, who had a highly advanced state but, and who were highly enlightened. And what, what, they, but what they teach the Illuminati children is that then this prophet of the enemy, who was the prophet of God, came and, and foretold their destruction if they didn't change their ways. Because they were definitely occultists. They were Luciferian on Atlantis. I mean, that was the the religion. And, in fact, a lot of the advances that Atlantis enjoyed was was passed down to them through supernatural means, is, is what I'll say. And so so they laughed at the prophet, and, they, they in fact, they, they, they killed him. And he, I guess sometime afterwards, we were taught that a few inhabitants escaped, but that, the, that but tragically the great city was lost. And, and the Illuminati to this day mourn the loss of Atlantis because they feel that that these were that the 
few survivors that left were, were among the, the, the great um, people who helped found the, what you call the precursors of, of Illuminism. One more quick question, if I may. And I wanted to ask you if you have any reason to believe that the people, men and or women, at the top of the pyramid, so to speak, practice a kind of magic where they are kind of skipping through time, in other words. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, well, you well, know, well, leaving the, one body, the leaving oh, the yeah, solar yeah. spirit, leaving one body and coming and being born into another one and they're, therefore, oh, yeah. you know, living through oh, yeah. time. All the time. In fact, see, now this, now I didn't go there in this interview because you start sounding wacko if you start discussing things like that. But in the spiritual side, they very much teach things like time travel, traveling out of body, um, you know, uh, psychic battling, um, things like that, things that cannot be explained by logic. And I saw things that I cannot explain through human intellect or reasoning that were highly supernatural and involve all of that. And more. Okay, great. It's a pleasure to speak with you, man. God bless okay, you. Okay, thanks, Harper. Oh, hey, uh, I think we have Dave Wilcox called in. I think you know uh, Dave through emails. Uh, yes. Uh, Zvali. Dave, uh, you want to say hello and they have a question for Zvali? Sure. Uh, Zvali, it's great to have you on the air. I'm really glad you decided to do it. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Dave. It's good to talk with you. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you're an old friend. I've been reading your stuff for so long. And um, you share so willingly and openly about yourself. It's a real honor to be able to speak with you in person like this. Well, Go ahead, well, Dave. You may have something you want to say to Zavali. Go ahead. Sure. Um, Question? I, I think one of the things I'd really like to have covered here is you shared with me in an email recently about these stages of enlightenment that they try to guide people through. Yes. And I would like you to try to sketch out for people how – the behavioral conditioning that's coming through the media and the movies and so forth might have affected them. In other words, what personality characteristics would you see in a person when they have been influenced by these teachings? How would the average person who's not really a bad person start to be leaning if the Illuminati teachings were actually having an effect on them? What would they be like? What would start happening? Well, again, as I said, the average person is not going to be a member of the group, so the influence right. would be much less. But the media, I believe that, well, in fact, I know, I don't believe, I know that some of the media that we're seeing nowadays is specifically targeted towards teaching people their philosophy or goals. All you have to do is watch a children's cartoon on Saturday morning, and almost across the board you'll see morphing, power battles, occult, and that's intentional. Um movies coming out. But basically, if a person's being influenced by their teachings, that person will learn to not trust their own instincts, their own feelings, their own body, their own perceptions. They'll be looking outside for guidance. Second of all, they will be moving towards a heavily um, occultic worldview. That, 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 you know, that um, leaning upon the occult is very heavily encouraged. All you have to do is watch Harry Potter <laughs> yeah, know? I mean, the, the I, whole I mean, sorry, idea of the... I mean, not to slam one of the most popular movies, but yes, I mean, or The Matrix. If you want to know pure and luminous philosophy, The Matrix shows it. Oh, yeah. The entire... Right all. down with uh, Morpheus being broken down with the injections, and they said that it's like hacking computer. Yeah. Okay, uh, exactly. we're going to take a break. We'll come back with our final segment, a uh, big finish on the investigative journal with uh, Vali on the Public Broadcasting Network. Okay, uh, we're back with our final segment with Bali, and uh, she's telling us uh, about her experiences, 30 years uh, with this insidious group, the Illuminati, and how deeply penetrated and filtrated they are in our culture and our, in our country. So, Bali, we talked about the higher levels, uh, the mid-levels you were involved in uh, as a head trainer. Uh, how low do they go? I mean, I said all along they're involved in gang stalking, the MK Ultra program, uh, infiltrating truth organizations, uh, infiltrating uh, groups that are trying to do good. Uh, how far down do they go? Well, they go down to the sister group level that I mentioned. And most sister groups have anywhere from usually roughly around uh, 30 members. And those are what a lot of people would consider the what you think of as satanic cults with the high priest and priestess. That would be the lower le the local level, the lower level. But those people are also very active in their community. And so they will be involved in infiltrating activities when possible. Because to them, 
it's not infiltrating. It's helping. They think they're helping the group or helping people by becoming a member and, and spreading the influence. Let me uh, squeeze in one more caller, Roger, a faithful listener. Roger, uh, you're on the investigative journal. Uh, yeah, thanks. I had so big a question in so little time, but uh, maybe I just uh, squeeze it. Had a couple of minutes. Yeah. Really try to work it in, Roger. Yeah, uh, well, you'll enjoy this first. And that is, I recall when Charlotte Iserbeet was here on the local Clear Channel radio show, and the host was, of course, dismissive of an Illuminati agenda. It was great to hear Charlotte say, You're telling me my. My own father was a high, and she, of course, was a first or second fiddle secretary at the Department of Ed. And she said, you're telling me my own father on his deathbed was telling me, you go get him, girl. And he was <laughs> one of them. And so that was great. Anyway, uh, I was going, my question was towards the uh, philosophical religious uh, motivators, if you will, which you've been dwelling on. And I've been, I've been trying to form it up into a more cohesive uh, well, try to make it quick. We're running out of time. Go ahead. Yeah, to expose the ethos of the, uh, you know, it's like the neocons serve as the pseudo-intellectual rationale for the Illuminati agenda. And uh, I don't presume that it turns on such fine uh, distinctions uh, so much as it is a bare-knuckled lust for power. But everybody has sort of a worldview that's uh, they used to justify their actions. And, uh, of course, uh, it's the most unconservative humanistic uh, social engineering agenda on a far larger scale. And now you mentioned about these people are basically, and it's rare as hand teeth. Quick, Roger. Yeah, to find somebody that's not uh, uh, oxymoronically both uh, uh, a spiritualist and a cultist and also a, a, a what do you call a, a hard a core a rationalist, or maybe that's just for public consumption, right? I know there was a question there somewhere, Roger, but anyway, yeah, well, uh, thanks for calling. Let me, I only got a minute. I got to finish with Zvali. Uh, Zvali, uh, tell us in your own words, you got a, about a minute or two left here. Uh, the real, you went forward, you, you came forward, you're now living a life uh, completely away from them. What's your hopes of uh, the future in our country right now? I, my hope is that people realize that this is happening and that they will start doing something about it, that they will start looking at. Now, again, we're talking about people who are immensely wealthy, so it won't be easy. But if people could rise up in prayer and just say, this isn't okay, if people will become informed enough to want to learn more about it, be aware they exist, and then possibly pray. Pray that people will, will take action against the things that are happening. Because okay, so Molly, I'm, okay. We're, we're all out of time. I, I, we're going to end on that prayer. I really thank you for coming forward. Uh, you're very courageous. We'll talk again. And I'll be back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. Same time, same place.